All right. But it is good to be in the house of the Lord. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, I thank you for this day. I thank you, Lord, for your blessing. God, I thank you for your keeping hand. That, Lord, that you have blessed and prom, uh, prospered us. And, Lord, that your promises are real in our heart and, Lord, our life. And, Father, we ask you, O oh God, that you would be in this house today. If there be a need, that, Lord, that you would reach out and touch. And, O oh God, that you would grant, Lord, your spirit and, Lord, your blessing to be in each heart. And, Father, we ask you, O oh God, all these blessings in Jesus' loving and holy name. Amen. is saying that God is dead. I watched that movie again the other day. But they are. By the actions of the world, people are saying God is dead. Yeah. He's not, is he? No. I serve a living Savior. Amen. And that's what we're going to start out by singing. <coughs>
always does a good job. And because Jesus lives, one day I'll fly away. I hope you fly with me. Okay. Once again, we thank you for giving us an opportunity to come back into your house and offer you worship and praise and receive the message that you have for us today. Today, we ask you to bless this offering that's about to be received. Lord, bless the gift and bless the giver. In your precious holy name, we pray. Amen.
Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to come in your house and give back into your kingdom, Lord. We ask you to bless and multiply these tithes and offerings, Lord, for thy kingdom. First, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Father God, we're thankful for the grace that we have received in Jesus Christ. God, we thank you for that amazing grace. And Father, I ask you, O oh God, that you would place your blessing upon every heart, every life in this place. And Lord, these words become alive unto us. I am saved by the grace of the eternal God. And Father, we ask you now for your spirit to abide. And Lord, for your goodness to be in this house, in Jesus' name, amen.
Wonderful blessing of God. I was truly glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And it's good to see the faithful out today. Amen. I tell you what, we get another good, good weekend, we're liable to have another three or four people here. Amen. But it is good to be in the house of God. And I tell you that the Lord has blessed and blessed all of us. I tell you, I, I don't look out here and I don't see people with bad things. I see I'm able to be out rejoicing. He, I, I don't think he needs that cane. He just got it where he can hit you with it every now and then. Just a, I think that's what the deal is. But uh, it is good to be here today. Good to see every one of you. There's a few faces in here. Now, you have to understand, Doris asks me all the time, uh, was so-and-so in church today? I said, I don't know, honey. If they weren't here before I quit shaking hands, I'm up here and they're back there. So I don't know. <laughs> but I'm glad Kent got here anyhow. <laughs> but it is, it is a joy to see every one of you. And uh, I always look forward to the time when we can have our fellowship. Look at Kroger showed up. Hey, man. <laughs> it is good to see you, brother. Hey, man. He, he tells me, I'll be there if they, you know, they let me out. They must have let you because he's here. Hey, Amen. <laughs> but we appreciate all of you so much. We need to be praying, like, like I mentioned earlier, for our pastor and his family. They're hopefully they're viewing, and uh, we pray that God will bless them and strengthen them, give him rest. I know that people say, "Well, I don't know why the pastor has to take vacation." Well, Jesus went often to pray. To go rejuvenate. To go and get with God for a while. And he took his disciples with him. Amen. So they would understand. This is what you have to do. And he comes back. And every time he comes back. I'm, in, I'm right up here close to the front. So I can make sure I don't miss a word. For all you back there and say, what did he say? I'm not telling you need to move up. Amen. And, uh, but every time he comes back, he is full of the Spirit, full of the blessing of God, and ready to share the Word. And so we're looking forward to his return, soon return, too. And uh, if you have your Bibles and will turn with us, To John the 11th chapter. Now I'm going to have to get my brethren to put me a clock up there on that wall because I don't have one with me. And we liable to be here at 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, I know, I know, yeah. We say that now. <laughs> It'd be like this when you're going out the door, I know. <laughs> but anyway, reading from John, the 11th chapter, the 22nd verse, Martha's speaking to Jesus. And I tell you, there's one thing that happens for us and to us, and I know that our pastor encourages us all the time. To be here on Saturday night for what? Prayer. There's one thing that's lacking in the life of the children of God that I see is effectual, fervent prayer. And we can have a little conversation with God over uh, the dinner table. Sometimes we'll remember to now I lay me down to sleep. But there comes a time when you need to stop long enough to talk to God. Amen. We expect a lot out of God. 
I, I, I am totally inept in taking care of myself. I have to have help. That's why I married a wife. <laughs> and I have a good one. She takes good care of me. But the thing of it is, I depend upon God. I depend upon Him. I can't make it without Him. I, I have acknowledged that. I have figured that out many years ago that I can't make it without God. And I am glad that I have come to that realization. Some people call it humility. Whatever words that you want to use. I don't call it depriving or deprivation or whatever. I don't, I don't use those terms because that would say that I'm less. No. I am all that God wants me to be. And that's what I want to be. I don't want to be satisfied with the status quo. I don't want to be satisfied without making it. I, I, have, I hear people all the time, if I can just make it in. No, I don't want to just make it in. Because I have an anchor of the soul. His name is Jesus. And he has promised that I will make it in. Not just make it in, but I'll make it in. Praise God. I'm excited about that part of it. And he keeps me. But he keeps me through prayer. And in reading this, Martha, here talking about her brother dying, all that kind of stuff. And here Martha begins to talk to Jesus, and she simply says, but I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Now, you can say, yeah, but he, he was Jesus. Yeah, he was Jesus. And there's a difference between me and Jesus, I'll assure you. But see, the Bible says that we are heirs of God, joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Praise God. You might as well own up to it that you have a special place in the heart of God. God looks at you. He doesn't see what you were in the past. He doesn't care about what went on back yonder before. When you came to Christ and asked him into your life and to forgive you of your sin, Jesus washed it all clean. And praise God, when God looks at you, he sees a raiment that is white as snow. Amen. Amen. Praise God. When we look back into the scripture, And I want to use one that we use a lot of times about prayer. And in Matthew, the second chapter, Jesus was speaking to his disciples, and he's speaking to the church. Now remember, Martha said to him, I know that whatsoever thou ask of God, God will give it to you. I, now, I, I remember that. Because that's going to be important today. Jesus turned around and made that abundantly more clear when he said, Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Now we read those scriptures right there and we get excited about it. Because that's important. You know, we can ask of God. One place he said, I, I thank you that you heard my prayer. I thank you always hear my prayer. Whatever the circumstance, whatever the case, God always hears. If you're a child of his, you have his ear. You don't have to call him down. You don't have to beg him up. You, all you have to do is speak that word and God hears it and it touches his life. Amen. Amen. Now I know that sometimes we think that I, I, 
Uh, I don't know if I can come to God. I, I understand all that. We have a little apprehension, you know, I, maybe I'm not good enough. Whatever the case may be, forget all of that. I thought bad old sister so-and-so the other day. Then ask God to forgive you. And did you tell sister so-and-so you didn't like her? Did you tell somebody else about sister so-and-so that you didn't like her? If you did, then go to that person and say, I lied like a yellow hound dog, and go over to sister so-and-so and say, I spoke evil of you, and I want to ask you to forgive me. Amen. Just that simple. Just that simple. But see, I can't come to God because something may have happened in the past that I don't know about. Forget all of that. He's your heavenly father. He loves you. Jesus loves you and died for you. Praise God. You don't have to worry about whether God cares about what happens to you or not. And I want you to listen to the latter part of this. We could come before God's throne with confidence. Amen? Amen. We can come with confidence. And like I said, I believe God. I believe he hears my prayer. I believe he always hears my prayer. Whatever it is, God hears. Now sometimes the answer is no. And we're going to get into that part of it, but we're going to get a little deeper than that. But see, when we talked about Martha over here, and I'm not talking about you, Martha, I'm sorry. But, <laughs> but uh, I know that whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it to you. Now, that it seems reasonable. He's Jesus. You know, praise God. He had the anointing of God. He had all the things. He is God. So what can be held against or from him? But let me read the rest of this little verse that I was reading, this little part. And it said, For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be open." Now, he's talking to you. He's not talking 2,000 years ago. He's talking to you today. Whatsoever. And then Jesus said, Of what man is there of you, whom if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? And I want you to listen to this verse right here. It's very important. If ye then, being evil, because remember, we are dead, in our trespasses and sin. But God has cleansed us by his blood. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Now, he didn't say, my Father... He, he didn't say the church's father. He didn't say the pastor's father. He said your father. Praise God. No wonder we cry, I'm a father. Praise the Lord. He's our God. He's our father. And when we come before him, we come addressing him as our father who art in heaven. Praise the Lord. Not some alien, not somebody away from us or somebody that doesn't know us. But we have the assurance that he is our God. He is our Father. Praise God. And if he hears his Son, he hears his Son. Praise the Lord. I am his. He is mine. Praise God. I believe God. But he always hears my prayer. And we can come boldly before the throne of grace. We don't have to take a back seat. Why? Because as I come in there and I address God, I'm talking to him as my father. Amen. Praise the Lord. I remember my father. And I remember the kind of man that he was. I remember how that he cared. And it didn't matter. 
If it came, push came down to shove, it, it got made done. Whatever. If that's good English, then we'll thank God for it. And if not, then y'all write it on something else. But anyway, it didn't matter what it was. When I came to him, there could be 75 people in that room. But when I walked over to him, everything else changed. His countenance changed. His attention changed. No matter what the racket, no matter what else was being said, if somebody else was talking with him, no matter what went on, when I spoke up and I asked of him, I had his 100% attention. No matter. No matter. And everything that was in his power to do or to give was transferred unto me. Now, when I come to my heavenly father, understand he owns the cattle of a thousand hills. All the gold is his. All the silver is his. We're not talking about monetary things. Whatever it is that you have a need of in your life, God has the answer for it. Amen. Praise the Lord. And he will give that to you. Amen. He'll withhold no good thing from you. Amen. I'm glad because I know Jesus. Amen. We can come before him because he is our heavenly father. And we can come, but we have to be patient. Patient. Patience. Patience is a virtue. Patience. We mentioned before about Daniel. Prayed. Praise God. For 21 days, nothing crossed his lips. No water, no food, no nothing. He didn't even anoint himself. But the Bible said on that 21st day, he had his fellows with him, and they were walking down side of the river. Praise God. 21st day, walking alongside the river. Amen. Happened to look up. And there was one coming towards him. He addressed him as to how that he was attired and how that he appeared. And when he voiced, when he spoke, he said, all of everything that was within me just fell apart. I lost all my strength. He fell down on his knees. He fell down upon his face. He could not look at him. Why? Because he was the word of the living God. And he was addressing him. And what he was saying was, and we take this thing out of context, he was talking about that the devil was holding up that prayer for 21 days. No, what he's talking about is there's a sign and there's a time. And there's a time for everything. What we may be asking for today, God may say it won't happen yet. You gotta wait just a little while. Come on now, be patient with God. We've asked him, let's believe him that he's heard us and that he has answered our prayer. Amen. For 21 days, he agonized and mourned before God for the children of Israel. And on that 21st day, the word of God came before him and his angels, Michael and Gabriel, all the rest of them there. And they were t he was talking about how that he is fighting that prince of Persia that's that thing that's happening, that's already happened. It's going to happen no matter what. These things are going to be there. But he said, I'm going back, and we're going to fight with him until we defeat him. One day he's going to put him under his feet, and we're going to go up, praise God. We're going to be with him forever and ever. Amen. Simeon, the Bible said on the eighth day, after Jesus was born, they carried him up to the temple as was according to the law. And there, the Bible said that Simeon looked out there and saw him. And when he saw him, and he was in the temple that day. Now, you have to understand about Simeon. Simeon was an older man. Simeon was not a part of that temple necessarily. 
But Simeon had been talked to by God. And I'll assure you, it was during prayer. And as he had talked to him, he told him, you're not going to die until you see my salvation. Now, I don't know how old he was at that time. When we pray and we ask God for things, it may be right now, it may be an hour from now, it may be next week, Brother Jimmy, it may be 10 years from now, it may be 20 years from now, but let me assure you, son, that God has not forgotten his promise. Amen. Amen. And let me tell you another thing. We may die and go on to be with him. But that prayer is still alive. Tommy and Kelly and myself, we're here because sainted people prayed for us. They prayed every day and every night. Whether it was my grandmother or grandfather or whether it was my other grandmother or grandfather who were preachers, whatever it was, whether it was my sainted mother, and whatever it was, whoever it was, they prayed for me. They've already died and gone on to their reward, but that prayer is still before the altar of God, and it's there in that bowl, and that incense is coming up, a sweet smell in the nostril of God, and God hears that prayer. Amen. Amen. You can say, well, I just came because I didn't have nothing else to do that Sunday. Go ahead and lie to yourself if you want to. But God is working because he promised. Amen. Amen. Simeon walked over. He was there in that, that temple that day. Why? Because God had led him to be there. He was in there. I've been waiting a long time around here. I don't know what God's going to do. I don't know how he's going to do it. That's the wonderful thing about God. We don't necessarily have to know how nor why nor when. All we need to know is that he is. Praise God. Not that he wants to, he is. And he was wandering around in the temple and here come Mary and Joseph with that baby in, his, in Mary's arms, and they walked in, and as soon as he saw him, he went over there to him and took him in his hands. Praise God. Praise God. Took him in his hands, and he looked down at that baby, and he said, Thou God, you can let your servant die because I have seen your salvation. I have seen him with my eyes. Why? Because you promised that I would. And I not only saw him, I recognized him. Praise the Lord. Amen. All I have to do is believe God. But he's going to do exactly what he said he would do. We have to be relentless in our prayer. I don't know what time it is. Well, if y'all that gullible, we'll go on. <laughs> relentless. You got to be relentless in your prayer. In Matthew, in the 15th chapter, over here, we find that there was a woman that was of Tyre and Sidon. Now, Tyre and Sidon was not Israel. These were not Israelis. She was not an Israeli. She was somebody else. She was what they call a Gentile. But the Bible said that when they came to the coast of Tyre and Sidon, behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. Now, the Bible says she came to him and asked him, what a wonderful, humbling experience. But what did Jesus say? What do I have to do with the woman? 
I'm here for the house of Israel. That's what he said. I'm here for the children of Israel. And he went on down a little further. And, he, and his disciples, she kept after him and kept after him and kept after him until the point of time to where that his disciples wearied of it. And it was embarrassing, probably. And they said, send her away. She crieth after us. And the Bible said, but he answered and said, I am not sent unto the lost sheep. I am but sent unto the lost sheep. I am, let me read it right. I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's where I am. That's what I'm doing. That's my job. That's what I'm here for. Then came she and worshiped him saying, Lord, help me. You ever had that kind of a prayer where you felt like it was beating the ceiling out, but it wasn't going anywhere? Lord, I'm doing all that I can do down here. I am praying. I am crying. I've got a son. I've got a daughter that's on crack coat tank cane. I have one that is lost. I don't even know where they are. Something is happening. We got a sickness in the household. I don't know what to do. What are we going to do, oh God? Have mercy on me. But it seemed like nothing happens, Brother Jimmy. It just lays there. Nothing happens. We pray and we pray. But see, what you find out about this woman was Jesus was still walking. He was still moving. He wasn't standing still. He wasn't, didn't have her there in front of him. All of this. But the Bible said she followed him and cried after him. Now we can stand back and say, Lord, I've already asked you for that, and I'm not going to ask you anymore because I believe that's not faith. Oh, yes, it is. Whose faith? God doesn't need your faith. He needs you to have faith. And what do we do? We have to turn around and face the wall of God and say, God, I want to ask you one more time, just one more time. And then when you get through asking that, Lord, just one more time. You don't worry, God. You don't wear him out. That is coming up before him, a sweet smell of savor. God is not going to turn you away, but he hears your prayer. He always hears your prayer. And realize this woman was talking. The disciples were listening to a woman that was crying after him. Send her away. But Jesus heard something else. And then... She prayed and worshiped him and said, Lord, help me. I don't have anywhere else to go. I don't have anywhere else to turn to. That's what we have to say in our own lives. Lord, where else can I go? You have the words of eternal life. God, I don't have another prayer that I can make. I don't have somebody else I can pray to. God, I don't have another answer laying out there somewhere. You're the only one. God, I have to depend upon you. And let me tell you something, he smiles, puts his big old arm around you, holds you up close, and loves you just like you've never been loved before. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Just hang in there, Sister Merle. We're getting there. But the Bible said, but he answered and said, again, it is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. That's not proper. But listen to her respond. And she said, truth, Lord. That's the truth. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. It doesn't matter. Lord, I'm not asking all these other things. I'm not asking to be patted on my pointy little head. I'm not asking to be recognized. All I'm asking for is my daughter. She's vexed with a grievous devil. And Lord, I need help. Help me. I can't answer this. I don't have an answer for it. No doctor, no spooking dyke, nobody else. Nothing. Nothing has answered me. Truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat the crumbs 
which fall from the master's table. We're talking about relentless. Relentless before God. Relentless. Not going to turn you a loose until you bless me. Praise God. And then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. We can be persistent with God. We don't need to quit. I know that we can get discouraged. I have people come around and talk to me about being depressed. Depression is a horrible disease. I recognize it as a horrible disease. And it's a terrible situation for a person to be in. But I have an answer. Praise the Lord. There's an answer. It's in the Word of God. Praise the Lord. It's right in here. All you have to do is open this book and begin to read. You don't have to read things pertaining to whatever it is you're depressed about. Just begin to read the Word, the living Word of God, and let that God Word get down in your heart and in your life. And not only that, begin to talk to your Heavenly Father, your Father who is in heaven. Begin to speak to Him. Ask Him, Lord, what do I need to do? Lord, whatever it is, I do not have the answer. Help me. And God will hear and answer your prayer. Praise the Lord. Being relentless. Dependent. It is you, O oh Lord, that has the words of eternal life. I don't have an answer. I don't know what to say. You ever been to that point where you get down and you say it's just so bad, I don't, I don't even know what it is. I don't know what to say. The Bible says pray until the Spirit begins to pray for you. Amen? Oh, I don't read that, Brother Clark. They said we don't need to read that. Yeah, you do. Pray until the Spirit begins to pray for you with sounds and utterances you don't even know what's being said because it's no longer you praying but it's the Spirit of God that's down on the inside of you that knows every need that is in your life and in your body and He's the one that's praying and there's a direct connection between He and the heavenly throne and let me tell you something, when He begins to pray things are going to start happening instantly, immediately right now, we don't have to wait we will have an answer we can trust God we can believe him because he has the words. Don't forget to be thankful. Amen. Well, I ain't seen anything happen. What happened to your faith? You prayed and asked, now have faith to believe. It's going to be just like he said. Amen. You don't have to worry about it. Be thankful. The power of prayer. And also, be expectant. Be expectant. That woman that was crying after Jesus, she had to have an answer. She had to have an answer now. Her daughter was in horrible shape. She was not going to quit until she got that answer. Jacob, Jacob wrestled with that angel. I'm not turning you loose till you bless me. I'm not. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to stop bombarding the, the portals of heaven until I get that answer that I need. God hears and answers our prayer. Amen. But let us Always understand 
to be thankful and to be expectant. What good does it do to come down here to the altar of prayer? And I, I don't care how many times you come down. You can come down here 20 times a day. It won't hurt my feelings a bit. But I know that one day, one time, you're going to come down and God is going to speak to your life and say, I heard that already. Amen? The answer is on the way. Daniel, it's been since the first day. First day, I heard your prayer. 21 days later, I'm still hearing your prayer. And I'm coming to let you know that's what he was doing. I am coming to let you know your prayer is being answered. It may not be the first day. It may not be this 21st day. It may, and it's going to be, what, 300 years in the future? But God has heard that prayer and that prayer is going to be answered. It's already answered in His Word. We can believe God. We can trust Him no matter what else happens. We can trust God. And we can believe Him. We can believe Him. Let us pray. Our Father God in heaven, I thank You for this day. I thank you, Lord, that you have blessed your people. And, God, that we have come out together, together with the saints of God, that we can rejoice, that we can pray, and, Father, that we can believe you. We can bring our petitions, make them known unto the church, make them known before the throne of grace. We can come boldly before you knowing that you are our Father and God that you hear us no matter what else goes on. Father, we thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' loving holy name, we bless you. And God, we ask you, O oh Lord, to be with us the rest of this day. Bring us back again at the appointed time that, Lord, that we might continue, continue with this worship of Jesus Christ. Father, bless now, O oh God. I thank you for these visitors that came out. Lord, I thank you for Gina being able to be out with us today. I thank you, O oh Lord, for Derek and all the rest of these, O oh God, that are here, that, Lord, that you have blessed to be in your house. And, Father, we bless you right now. In Jesus' loving name, amen.